So our first conditioning we're going to talk about is the cardiac output method. And this is our primary means of developing aerobic capacity. Now, cardiac output is a product of stroke volume and heart rate. All right. And the overarching theme of why we, we use this method is to improve our ability of the heart to pump blood to the extremities. So cardiac output uh, is going to happen with stretching of cardiac tissue, specifically in the left ventricle of the heart. Now for this to happen, the heart rate has to be in the correct range. And this is where people go wrong. They either go too high or they go too low. A lot of times people will do this and they'll say, well, it's too easy. Can't be doing anything. If your heart rate is too high, it won't do anything. It will actually prevent the stretching effect that we are looking for. Number two, if you don't use the correct modalities, then that will either put you in a position where the heart rate is too high or too low. So we're going to discuss what that is. First thing we need to ask is who is it for? It's for anyone. Okay, you're gonna use this with all of your clients. This is a mainstay in my programming. Out of everything I've talked about in this course, you know, there are some things that are for people and some things that aren't for the right people. This is a method that can literally bridge all abilities, all right? So it's going to improve recovery, it's gonna improve aerobic ability, which will help other things like our anaerobic components, our strength work, um, and it's going to help you live longer. I don't know many modalities that can actually claim to help you live longer. This is one that can do it. So when we perform this, we're gonna do 30 minutes at a minimum. It's gonna be steady state using cyclical measures. So a bike, a light jog, a light sled pull, a rower, a ski erg. Some things you could potentially use are swimming. Um, and I would even say for jogging, for some people their heart rate might go too high. So we need to make sure that we're using jogging for the right person. You need to be a pretty decent jogger. If you have someone that's overweight, probably not gonna be the right modality for them. The other thing is swimming can be great for the right people as well if they're a good swimmer and they can keep their heart rate in the right range. And then the last thing, sled pull, I prescribed this one for people and I've seen that it either goes one of two ways. They either, their heart rate is right on point or it's too low. Uh, and you might be thinking, well, it, would it be really be too low? I've seen endurance athletes stay in the 115 to 120 range, which is going to not quite be high enough where we want it to be. So as far as uh, recommended heart rate, we need 60 to 70%, which is zone two of our max heart rate. We need to do it for 30 minutes at a time, and we need to use cyclical measures. So you can mix it up and use a lot of them, um, but this is not gonna be a sexy method. It's not supposed to be. It's supposed to allow us to improve recovery and aerobic capacity and you're not gonna throw in things like uh, front squats or power cleans or anything that's uh, you know, more sexy in nature. It should be a method that allows us to work at a consistent pace for 30 minutes at a time.